The Manticore Witcher gear is only available at level 40 and cannot be upgraded. It's the only gear set in the entire game that increases Geralt's maximum toxicity level when equipped by a total of 30 points. 10 points each for the chest and trousers and 5 points each for the gauntlets and boots. The two Manticore swords do not increase toxicity but greatly increase armor piercing by 250 points apiece. With the Acquired Tolerance Alchemy skill, you can increase Geralt's maximum toxicity to 267 points by simply looting and buying all the related alchemy formulas in the game. Utilising the general skill named Metabolic Control will add a further 30 points to this total, increasing the limit to 297 points, and equipping Manticore Witcher gear will see the gauge maxed out at a whopping 327 points. This will enable Geralt to neck down 5 decoctions, or 4 decoctions and 2 potions, all in one go, making him look like a goddamn meth head. Either way, he's going to kick some serious ass. The 3 piece set bonus awarded for equipping 3 Manticore items will enable bombs to also deal critical hit chance and critical hit damage, becoming a devastating long range option for dealing massive damage to both single and multiple targets. If you enjoy utilising bombs for most encounters, then also consider investing in the following three alchemy skills. Pyrotechnics for additional bomb damage, cluster bombs for increased AoE damage, and efficiency which increases bomb uses by up to an additional 5 charges. The 6 piece set bonus awarded for equipping all 6 Manticore items will increase the maximum number of charges for both potions and bombs by an additional charge, which is a much less enticing perk than the 3 piece bonus. Manticore Witcher gear can only be found and crafted when visiting the country of Toussaint, which is exclusive to the Blood and Wine expansion, specifically when visiting the only Grandmaster crafter in the entire game, named Lazar Lafargue. You can find Lafargue inside his specialised workshop, which is located directly northwest of Matina Gate, as shown here. He specialises in both weapons and armour, so once you upgrade him to Grand Master, he'll become your one-stop shop for all your crafting requirements in the entire game. Speak with Lafargue and you'll be given an option to ask about the lost Grand Master diagrams for each of the Witcher schools. These diagrams, where do I look for them? In this case, you want to learn more about the Manticore diagrams, which relates to a drunk Manticore Witcher named Merton. School of the Manticore, probably know the least about it. Who was last seen locked up 100 years ago in Bastoy Prison. Bastoy Prison is now nothing more than a crumbling ruin, located on the western edge of Toussaint, deep within the Gorgon foothills. From the Shushot Cave signpost, travel southwest down past the western side of Lac Selevi, where the mysterious hermit and lady of the lake guard the almighty Erendite Silver Sword. For orientation, you want to approach the ruins from the northeast, where the prison ruins soon loom up at you from atop a steep hill. Climb the lower part of the broken wall to the left and carefully traverse its edge up to the right, until you drop down into the tower section with wooden support beams and a gated balcony. Look for a loose stone on the right wall near the gap leading to the balcony. Looting this will reward you with the Manticore Steel Sword Diagram. You'll also find a prisoner's journal, specifically Witcher Merton's journal, indicating he went to a legendary cave once frequented by Lebioda the deity. Your next stop for investigation. Notes in the journal suggest that straight out of prison, Merton went to the legendary cave. Leviota was supposed to have hunkered down the ruins. That's my next destination. Lurking around in the Bastoy prison ruins, you'll also encounter an Alp, a powerful vampire disguised as a deceivingly peaceful woman. With similar combat characteristics to a Bruxa, you may want to avoid her altogether. However, if you do decide to take her down, be sure to pop a black blood potion as well as coat your silver with vampire oil to give you the upper hand. The moon dust bomb and the Yuridan sign are also very effective, preventing them from being so elusive. Lebioda's prayer cave is an unmarked location, located in Caraberta Woods territory, to the far southeast of Toussaint, just southeast of Galenza Farm and southwest of the Termes Palace ruins. 
head deep into the woods following an overgrown path between a rocky dell, where you'll encounter a couple of level 40 panthers. Take them down or sprint straight past if you prefer to avoid confrontation. The cave entrance at the end of the path is unassuming, but as you descend further into the circular chamber below, it becomes evident this is a sacred shrine to the prophet Lebioda, adorned with his teachings carved directly into the walls. You'll also notice several slips of paper adhered to the walls by his followers, with a prayer to the deity on each one, asking for help or forgiveness. Employ your Witcher senses and notes of particular interest will glow up in red, specifically the one you can actually loot on the southeastern wall, which turns out to be the crafting diagram for the Manticore chest armour. On the back of these plans, the Witcher Merton wrote a prayer to Saint Lebioda seeking to denounce his sins. Continuing his pilgrimage, he left the shrine to travel to the Temple of Lebioda to meet with someone called the Great Beggar. There we are. Merton wrote a prayer on the back of the diagram. Seems he left the prison, came here, then went back to the temple. Located to the northwest of Toussaint, the Temple of Lebioda is an impressive landmark that lies on the western bank of the Sons Retour River part of the Prophet Lebioda statue complex. If you completed all five parts of the secondary quest named Big Feet to Fill, then construction of this huge monument of Lebioda will be completed, allowing you to bask in all its glory. Big Feet to Fill automatically starts as soon as you complete the contract named Bovine Blues. From the statue signpost head north, under the stone archway and up the steps to enter the entrance crypt of the now abandoned temple. Smash through the cracked wall at the end using a blast of Ard, where you'll be met by the tormented spirit of the great beggar, mentioned in Merton's notes. Coat your blade in spectre oil and be wary of the wraith's powerful Ard-like blast. Once the ghost has been put to rest, search the floor of the chamber and pick up the bones of the great beggar, as well as a small container sitting on a wooden table which contains two more manticore diagrams, the trousers and the boots. Reading the great beggar's journal reveals Merton went on from the temple to visit the hidden chapel for his final cleansing, a bleak place teeming with monsters, where a dangerous trial would await him. Just before leaving the entrance crypt of Lebioda's temple, drop the bones into the open sarcophagi along the southern wall, so the great beggar may finally rest in peace. Ready. Soul should rest in peace now. In the Gorgon foothills toward the southwest of Toussaint, along the western shores of Lake Saïd Legad, just northwest of the Saïd Legad amphitheater signpost, you'll find an unassuming cave mouth the only entrance to the hidden chapel referred to by the Great Beggar. From the theatre signpost, head directly northwest and dive into the lake's water. You'll have to swim a short distance into the flooded cave entrance, where you'll meet more solid ground once inside. Just like the Great Beggar described it, Chapel Merton visited must be in the cave. As you progress further into the cave, you're met with a strange purple haze of mist causing Geralt to cough when first inhaled, then strange hallucinations thereafter. Damn it! What's going on here? Venture forward to spy two stark naked women prancing around in a cave grotto. Although tempting, don't be fooled as if you approach them they soon transform into screaming Bruxa, and the only thing they'll be sucking is your blood. To avoid confrontation, simply stick to the left wall and continue heading north through to the next tunnel and into the next room, where you'll be met with a strange sight. A group of five beggars sitting on the floor with outstretched arms pleading for help. If you tip all five beggars with 10 crowns each, you'll be able to freely exit the room undisturbed. The 50 crowns sitting on the floor will cover all your costs. However, if you fail to tip just a single beggar, a level 40 Arca Spore will spawn, blocking your exit until it's dead. If you do decide to fight, its main weaknesses are Cursed Oil, Ard and Igni. Continue northeast through the tunnels and drop down into a chamber where a man is surrounded by three Kikimore warriors. Take them all down with silver coated with insectoid oil as well as a few doses of Igni, upon which the man mysteriously evaporates into a cloud of violet fog. After ascending a couple of rocky ledges, exit the chamber via the western tunnel, removing the rubble blocking your path with a blast of Ard. 
Proceed through the hole and make your way up the path on the right, taking you above the pool of water and into an alcove to the west. A fissure of light streams down from behind a mysterious man, who rises to his feet to greet you. He appears to look exactly like the prophet Lebioda himself, disappearing into thin air a moment later. Looting the small box on the floor rewards you with the Manticore Silver Sword diagram, as well as Merton's notes. Reading these reveals the final atonement of the ex-witcher's pilgrimage, the Lake of Cleansing, where Lebioda healed the bodies and spirits of his most loyal followers. Martin went to the lakeside to seek final atonement. Should look into it. This sacred lake is located far across Toussaint on the northeastern edge of the duchy, just northeast of Braysane Farm in Mar or Brebis territory. After arriving at the farm, head through the estate and take the northeast path out of the settlement, which when followed, leads you directly to the Lake of Cleansing. After dealing with the three bandits disturbing the peace of the lake, dive into the water and use your Witcher senses to locate a glowing red sack lying on the bed of the lake. Looting this sack rewards you with the final diagram of the Manticore set, the Gauntlets, as well as Merton's last letter. Although initially tormented by his mutations and Witcher identity, Merton finally found peace and enlightenment through his pilgrimage journey, allowing him to be free of his past. As well as various monster parts such as blood, ears and eyes, obtained from killing monsters, the Manticore set also requires a few rarer materials to craft, as follows. Cured Draconid Leather, Dimeritium Plate, Dimeritium Ingots, Silver Ingots, Meteorite Silver Plate and Ruby Dust. Most of these materials can be purchased directly from Grandmaster Lazar Lafarg, as indicated by the yellow stock icon at the top for the displayed price below. However, purchasing everything can add up to be very costly, so it's best to first check if you can craft these materials by using suitable ingredients you've already looted from the environment. To check this, simply locate the material in question listed under the Crafting Components submenu near the top. For example, one cured draconid leather requires two hardened leather and five chitinous shells to craft for 102 crowns, which would otherwise cost 524 crowns to buy. One dimeritium plate requires two dimeritium ingots to craft for 284 crowns, which would otherwise cost 2,984 crowns to buy. One meteorite silver plate requires two meteorite silver ingots to craft for 97 crowns, which would otherwise cost 983 crowns to buy. And finally, ruby dust can be acquired by tabbing over to the dismantle page and dismantling any rubies you may have in your possession. If you don't already own any rubies, then dismantling any ruby encrusted jewellery, such as rings or necklaces, will extract the required gemstone for dismantling.